The next question, let's see. Which of the following will not be observed? Now you got to be very careful when a multimeter operating in resistance measuring mode probes connected across a component are just reversed. So the idea is the multimeter probes are reversed like initially AB later AB this side and there are different components will scan all the options one by one. But before that how does a multimeter measure the resistance. See you can treat it as a voltage source, a constant voltage source. So whatever is the device which is connected across that voltage source, there will be a current and voltage per unit current that will be the resistance. That's how the measurement is done. Quite a simple operation. Now let's see. Multimeter shows no deflection in both the cases that is before and after reversing the probes if the chosen component is capacitor. In fact, the first option itself is correct. Because see, we need to say which is not observed. Now just understand that a battery is connected across a capacitor. So when you reverse the probe in either cases the current would be flowing and multimeter would be registering the value of resistance because voltage per unit current that would be resistance. The resistance value would be variable that's another issue but it will show the deflection while it says it does not show deflection and we are to pick out the improbable event so option number one would be the correct one. However let's take the opportunity to explore others as well. Now see let me go with 4, 3, 2. That will make it an easier way. In case 4, it says multimeter shows an equal deflection in both the case, before and after reversing the probe, if the chosen component is resistor. Of course. Now just imagine a voltage source connected across a resistor. Either way you connect, the value of current would be same. So this is a event which will happen, so we will not choose that. In the third case, it says that you go through the option. So what does that mean? While the forward bias happens, there is the current. While the reverse bias happens, there would be no current. So in that case, option number three is also correct. So we will not be choosing it. You know, the fact is correct. So we would not be choosing, right? And for the second, it shows no deflection in both the case before and after reversing the probes if the chosen component is metal wire. So this needs a little bit of, you know, interpretation from our side. The metal wire has a negligible resistance. So in that case, the deflection would be almost nil. So in that way, amongst all these four options, one is the best possible candidate in terms of option because this fact will not happen, right? Okay, now let's go to question number eight. Question number eight. Now, concentric metallic hollow spheres of radii R and 4R hold charges Q1 and Q2. Now, it's something like this, say. This is one sphere. This is another sphere. Here is Q1. Here is Q2. And the radii are R and 4R respectively. Now it says that the surface charge densities of the concentric spheres are equal. So all right we'll do that and based on that what will I get? Q1 by R square will be equals to Q2 by 16 R square charge per unit area. That's the first condition. But the second condition that we are supposed to find is the potential difference between the inner and outer sphere. So one way is that calculate the potential of each and subtract. The other is zoom into the property. The property is potential difference between two spheres will depend only on the charge on the inner sphere, right? That's how it goes. So straightforward, if I calculate the potential difference just due to the inner one, KQ1 by R, that's the potential difference, and minus of KQ1 by 4R. I simply calculated the potential difference between inner and outer 
only due to Q1. And this is going to give me 3 by 4 K Q1 by R. So here the value of K would be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So option number 2 would be correct. We didn't find any opportunity to use this particular fact, but that's fine. Let's go to the next. Question number 9. Let's see. A metallic sphere cools from 50 degree to 40 degree in 300 second. All right. If atmospheric temperature around is 20, the sphere's temperature after next 5 minutes, that means after next 300 second again. That means in the first 300 second, there is a drop of 10 degree. And in the next, we need to calculate the drop. That drop would be, of course, less than 10 degree because with increasing time, the rate of cooling decreases. I'm talking about Newton's law of cooling. Now, you know, in case of Newton's law of cooling, the fact is dt by t, capital T is temperature, small t is time, is minus k, temperature at any instant minus surrounding. But you know, with all valid approximation, because the variation is so slow, we can write this as delta t by delta t is minus of k t minus of t s. This is how it goes. So in that case, this t would be placed as the average value. This is a regular practice we do in Newton's law of cooling calculation. Now let me show how are we going to proceed. In the first case, 50 to 40, so that is going to be 40 minus 50 and time, we will keep it in second, all right, 300 second equals to minus k, that's what we'll calculate. This is the average temperature, 40, 50, the average temperature would be 45 and the surrounding temperature, so here that's 20 and we call that as equation number 1. Now in the second case, okay, the temperature has already become 40. In the same time span, 5 minutes, we got to calculate the temperature. So we'll repeat the same event. So what happens is say, that's going to be T minus 40. Let the temperature be T degree centigrade because all the difference is involved. So centigrade Kelvin, it's all the same thing. And then down is time, which is 300 equals to minus k. This time the average value is going to be t plus 40 by 2 and surrounding of course will remain same. So that's equation number 2. So here you go, two equation, just make a division and you solve it and you would get the correct option as 33 degree centigrade. And you can make a quick, you know, verification in this way like in initial five minutes 10 degree of fall in the next five minute the fall is seven degree makes sense sensible isn't it let's go to the next question